Hey all, this is Torna and today we're going to be discussing AIM in the arena. Now as you can see on the screen, this is the arena shard of one of the people who's been following my guide, Torm DK. He's been following the guide, going along and kind of collecting up the AIM characters and as you can see, his arena is now basically getting to the point that it's a lot of AIM people. Apparently there's been four people in the top 10 who are all focused on AIM, he's been following along my guide and stuff one of the biggest detractors that people have said is oh hey aim is awful in arena so what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, a few different battles we've got uh, i think it's something like six battles here yep six different battles versus different teams to kind of show you the way that aim can actually work in the arena so that way Hopefully people can kind of start trusting that I kind of know what I'm talking about. So the first one here we've got is the aim versus this hero brawler mixed with um, mixed with the Fantastic Four team. So this one's a bit of a mismatch, but you can see this about a 40k punch up. So there's going to be a bit of work here. Now you can see here how... Um, Torm's got his setup. So first of all, you've got Assaulter in the middle. He's going to be giving his speed bar to Scientist Supreme and AIM Security. Now I know this is different to one of the other videos I had. I think that this is actually better than what I had. Purely because AIM Assaulter and uh, is going to be giving that speed up at the sorry the speed bar to security and to um, shield uh, sorry to the Scientist Supreme. Scientist Supreme is going to be extending the taunt, basically keeping the taunt up all the time because she extends it with her special. They're also going to be applying all those debuffs with her ultimate more often, being able to flip any debuffs on your team. Now you can see here that AIM Researcher is there. For some reason, people have it in their head that AIM Researcher is trash. This is completely wrong. She is actually one of the best healers in the game. She is able to flip bleeds, which is key against some teams that you're going to be fighting in a arena specifically now that people are focusing teams such as um the Asgardians and teams such as the uh, Symbiotes as well. A lot of bleeds on those teams that you're able to then flip. She also has one of the highest health pools in the game, which means that you can then utilize that to use her heal and get more healing off. Graviton is also just amazing. There's just there's such a synergized, well put together team. Um, and I think that they just work so well together. So let's check out this first video. So this one is, as I said, versus that like a brawler mixed with Fantastic Four team. Um, and I'll show you exactly kind of how he goes about it. So that way you kind of can get the idea on how it goes. So first of all, we're going to come in. We're going to debuff everyone. Now you can see there the offense down is just really good for being able to keep that defense down. Now we're killing Miss Marvel here because Miss Marvel is going to be dealing a lot of damage. Because, and the other thing is that she's going to taunt if any of them drop low, so you're better off just killing her straight away. Now we get the taunt up here very early because of the fact that she got um, speed up because of the assaulter there. You can see just how key the stun here is from Graviton because the stun from Graviton means that this Marvel, Miss Marvel, is doing nothing. And look at that key res there as well. Scientist Supreme resing up the shield, uh, sorry, the aim security. The offense down, the slow there. It doesn't matter about Miss Marvel anymore because she's stunned, she got slowed. Um, her stun got lot pushed back for another turn as well because she dropped a low and uh, Graviton extended it. Boom, alright. So, Human Torch is gone. Now, I'm not entirely sure why he's not focusing um, Ghost Rider here. I'd be more scared of Ghost Rider than any of the other ones. Come on, switch, switch to Ghost Rider. Nope, we're going to keep killing Mr. Fantastic. There, just that flip is key as well, even just flipping the stun there from um, Mr. Fantastic. Get the heal. The heal's going. I think he just wants to kill him to get rid of that passive, I assume. But either way, you can see that this is basically over. 
once Miss Marvel was gone, uh, once Human Torch was gone, all the rest of them really aren't doing much. We got the big stun there. Finish off, Mr. Fantastic. And you can see that AIM isn't even like losing health. You're actually starting to gain that health back as well. Um, they're just... This team's not doing much. And I know what you're going to say. This is a non-meta team, which is fine. There's going to be a lot of non-meta teams when you're a new player because a lot of new players don't exactly know how to build a proper team. Now, of course, this one's at the top of the arena. They're probably going this way because they're going to build Sinister Six and then they're going to get Invisible Woman um, and build up like their Fantastic Four first or something like that. Uh, against Fantastic Four, you might have start having more issues, but I doubt it. I think you'd still be fine. Plus, they're kind of putting themselves behind because they are going this route. And... Come on. Do it. Stop. No. You really... I think Tom's talking at the moment, but I muted it because... There we go. Alright, so that one was easy. You can see there that it wasn't really any issues. So next up, we're going to verse one that's more meta. So we're going to go against a Crystal, Yo-Yo, Captain Marvel, Minerva, and Hela. So this one's kind of like a, a mishmash team, but it's still going to be super strong. Because they've got basically four of the strongest characters in the game. Plus Crystal, who isn't, like, isn't awful. Now you can see here against Yo-Yo, you're really well off. Because every time they're applying debuffs, um, you're getting the speed bar here on your uh, researcher. So you're going to be able to get more heals. Anytime any of them attack Scientist Supreme, you can chuck those offense back downs back on them. You take out Minerva here because she's got the res. You don't want that res going off because then you're just essentially killing, having to kill six people. There, she's dead. Next, Hella is probably the key. Hella or Yo-Yo are both kind of annoying to verse. I guess getting rid of that offense, you have to kind of weigh up getting rid of the offense down as opposed to the damage um, that Hella is going to be dealing. But the stun from Graviton kind of just makes a lot of the matches 4v5. And then at once it's a 4v5 because you've got one of them stunned permanently. You're just really okay to be able to do whatever you want with the rest of them. You can see here we're just slowly healing back up. Boom. Now, I think here against Yo-Yo, you might even be wanting to keep Yo-Yo alive. Um, just being able to keep that Yo-Yo alive means that you're getting the constant offense down, which means your research is just going constantly. The other thing is that you can transfer those offense downs back over onto the enemy team as well. Um, well, it's going to just go back onto Yo-Yo, but still, just kind of getting being able to get rid of them is fine. Boom, look at that. Yo-Yo's dead. And Hella's about to be dead. Goodbye, Hella. See you in Hella. That was a that was a lame joke. That was a lame dad joke. Sorry about that, guys. Alright, I don't know why the, the stun there was probably not necessary. You're just playing with your food here, Tom. Bye, Crystal. The debuffs here are really good on Assaulter as well, because if Assaulter's debuffed, that means that he's going to attack more with his ult, uh, with his special. And goodbye, Captain Marvel. Go join Hala. All right. So there, that's another one. Now, obviously, that's, again, not a really meta team. Um, it is a lot of meta characters, but they're not super meta. So let's look at, hmm, what is the other character that is suggested for new players to go? Oh, that's right, Star-Lord. So, how do AIM fare against Star-Lord and the Guardians in a kind of 
Star Lord and Rocket and Miss Mar uh, sorry, Star Lord, Rocket, Minerva, Captain Marvel, and Yondu. Now, a lot of people who go Guardians at the start are going to be building Yondu because he's a very easy Guardian to farm up. Um, so it's not unexpected that they kind of build him up as well, especially if they are newer players who don't understand that Yondu is trash and falls off so quickly compared to a lot of the other characters in the game. Look at how much damage this aim squad is dealing because of the debuffs. Um, you've got... Look, the other thing is that if you're versing Minerva, you could see there, you manage to just flip all of those regens. Uh, sorry, flip all those bleeds. Look at this. All those bleeds, boom, regens. Thanks for that, Minerva. I really appreciate you healing my team. And even the ones that don't get flipped by Researcher are then flipped by uh, Scientist Supreme. Now, goodbye Minerva. Minerva's going down. You can see here that Rocket was still stunned. And then because he dropped below 50% health again, he got stunned for even longer. So you can see here that even against um, the against Star Lord and against Rocket, you're not having much of an issue. You basically are just able to control the game however you need. That's the thing about AIM. They're a very control-heavy team. You're based around stunning them slowing them and then extending those stuns and slows and just ensuring that you have all your debuffs on them and being able to slowly whittle them away while you just heal anything up that they manage to actually deal to you and you can see here it's yondu the last man standing wanted to avenge his son but no chance and there we go so again that's a mismatched team but it's still consisting of two of the meta characters that people can are uh, consistently suggesting for new players. Two incredibly strong characters, Minerva and Captain Marvel. And then one character that a lot of people who are new players are going to be working on for them to actually unlock Star-Lord. But let's get into some of the more meta teams. First of all, we're going to go against... Let's go Symbiotes. So this is where he's at at this stage. So it's 106k. Number rank 15 in arenas. Definitely nothing to laugh at. And here we go. These are the different of different teams that he's versing. And you can see this symbiote team. That's a scary symbiote team. That's 125k. They've got all of the symbiotes in there. They've got uh, Spider-Man and Miss Ma uh, Spider-Man and Miles Morales. go in and see exactly how they fare. Now, the good thing about Symbiotes is that they rely on their debuffs. They're a very debuff heavy team, which is something that we can use because each of these debuffs is then going to be feeding into our Researcher so she gets more turns. Each of the debuffs can also be flipped by Researcher if they're Bleeds or by Scientist Supreme if they're not. And any debuffs can also just be chucked back onto them. Now, the key here is to take out both Carnage and Symbiote Spider-Man as soon as you can. Both of those two are the big scary ones here. They're the ones that are going to be causing us pain. Carnage isn't as much of an issue as long as you're staying above his health threshold that he has. Um, so as long as you're above the 25% health that you think it is, um, in which case his passive activates and he gives speed bar to the others, you are fine. However, Symbiote Spider-Man is going to be chucking bleeds, he's going to be chucking defense downs, he's going to be chucking all those painful things onto your team. Venom also is a bit painful, he does the bleed, he does the ability block, he does the health block as well, which is kind of just going to be really annoying. Now Miles and Spider-Man, uh, just plain Spider-Man, Peter Parker, you don't really need to worry too much about them. Yes, they have some strong parts in their kit that are a bit annoying, but they're mostly just going to be feeding you into you. They're going to be giving you stuff. You can see there uh, when um, the shield, uh, sorry, the aim security got hit, she managed to put 
back the um, ability block back onto Venom, which was really cool. Now we just kind of take out Carnage. As I said, the other two aren't really much to worry about. So we're just going to basically ignore them. Boom. This is aim. They're just they're just so good at kind of keep staying alive and being able to kind of just heal up any damage and just anything that has debuffs. A lot of teams have debuffs, any of those kinds of things, just kind of work into your team and help you. And it's basically over. It's basically over as soon as they start losing people. The good thing about AIM is that it's not over when you start losing people either because you've got Scientist Supreme there who can start rezzing back up your team. Now, yes, it is a low-ish chance, but it's still a chance for you to kind of get back into the game. All right, so next up, we're going to go against Asgardians. Now, this is one that people were kind of doubting me about that you can't take as guardians you can only do it in war now we're going to show you that it doesn't need to be in war even then this is a 15k punch up so it's going to kind of depend on how well we can play this all right here we go So as always, we're going to chuck out these debuffs. Now we want to take out Thor first. Thor is going to be our painful enemy here. And if we manage to kill Thor, because basically any time any of the other characters um, take damage, any of the other Asgardians take damage, Thor starts gaining these charges. When he gets full charges, he comes over and smacks us in the face. But if we manage to kill him or stun him then he's not going to be able to do that which means that we can take out everyone else you can see here we're damaging him and he's not getting any charges which is great now the annoying thing is that in arena we don't have our disrupt now usually you have a disrupt whenever um, someone drops below 75 percent health with graviton however obviously not in arena um, it's only in war that you have that so you kind of have to play it better essentially now you can see here this thor's just stunned forever so we don't really have to worry about him now we have to kill greg a couple times but that's not too bad we're just waiting for someone to drop out of stealth, basically. And here we go. So we've got Loki and we've got Hala here that are out of stealth. We just got to make sure that we stay healed up. That's our key. That's our win condition is staying ab above the, uh, like staying as healed as possible. Check out more debuffs. More slows, more um, defense down and more offense down is going to make it a lot easier for us to be able to do stuff. And here, now... You can see here Thor dropped out of stealth, which is really good because he's not going to be healing above 50%. That means that we can then kill him. Now Thor's gone. We don't have to worry about him unstunning or anything like that. We can start focusing down everyone else. Kill Loki so that way they stop being able to go into stealth. The good thing is that in Arena, the Asgardians also don't have all their boosts. So they don't have Hela generating more... Um, more guys up or anything like that uh more gregs up so we just are able to kind of continue on yes we lose our war boost but they lose theirs and theirs are a lot better than ours we're ours we're not dependent on our war boosts now good thing is that sith's all sith is almost dead we can just kind of finish her off the others aren't really doing much the good thing is that they're slowed and they're slowed forever all right, Sif's gone. Now we want to focus down Hela. Heimdall basically does nothing. I know that he's kind of, I mean, maybe with high red stars he might be decent, but he's not really that all that useful. Basically, if you can, you want to take out Thor, then you want to take out Loki, then you want to take out Hela. 
Now, between Loki and Hela, it's going to come down to whoever each kind of drop below 50% and are able to hit before they get stealthed by Loki. Um, but either way, both are very viable options. I would probably suggest the Loki then Hela, but it depends on how well you're juggling their health. And you can see there, very easy win. We didn't lose anyone. We didn't even come close to losing anyone. But now for the 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 final one, the masterpiece, the the top of the food chain, the Black Order. Now this is Black Order plus Minerva, so they're not going to have Ebony more here. Um, you can see here, even now, it's going to be an 18k punch up, but even without Ebony more, that Black Order is actually pretty decently strong. And this guy's got some pretty decently strong um, Black Order characters. You can tell that he's most likely a whale or something. Assumably, he's a whale, or he just kind of got grinded really hard on Blitz. Um, but even then, without Ebony more and with uh, with Minerva, they're still a very scary team. Obviously, you don't have to verse empower Thanos, so it's not too bad, but it's still going to be really difficult. All right, so let's see how we go. So the good thing is there, she came in, um, Proxima came in, applied all of her offense downs. Now, because she hit security, security is then going to be like, oh, hey, here, did you lose something? Now, we want to take out... Um, we want to take out Minerva first, as always, so that way she's not... Uh, Wait, Torm's just chucked this on. He's just chucked it on, um, on auto. <laughs> He's that confident at winning. He's just put it on auto. Oh, you mad lad. Absolute mad lad. Now, the annoying thing about Thanos is that we can't land our debuffs on him. He's got like 10,000, uh, no, a thousand percent extra resistance when he does have his, um, when he has taunt, uh, if he's not in empowered version. So we just have that annoying thing. Now, also the other thing is that we're punching into Thanos. Every time we hit Thanos, Cull Obsidian is then going to come along and smack us in the face, which is very annoying. Obviously we don't want to be smacked in the face. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like being smacked in the face at least. Now we target Minerva, finish off Minerva. All right, Minerva is dead. The good thing is there that we're able to hit Cull, uh, sorry, hit Corvus as well. So we managed to offense down him and slow him. Now we're killing Proxima here. Proxima's gone. Kill Corvus. Corvus is the only real damage dealer here. Cull's pretty dangerous, but Corvus is annoying. Corvus is the one that's going to kind of jump out and scare us and take out our Science Supreme from behind. Alright, and finally, we're just kind of whittling them away. They're not able to damage us enough. We're slowly damaging them. They have no heals. We have heaps of heals. You can see here, how annoying Cull is. He's just smack, smack, smack. Whack, whack, whack. Thanos is dead. Thanos is dead. Now we take out Cull. Bye bye, Cull. And bye bye, Corvus. And there we go. Boom. And that's AIM. You can see here that AIM are just really really good in arena a lot of people kind of just underestimate them now unfortunately we don't have a video of them versus defenders um i don't know if that's because torm hasn't came across one like they're not high they're not high enough in arena which kind of makes sense arena um Defenders drop off very quickly nowadays when you're versing teams such as like the symbiotes even then um they just can't really hold up against like symbiotes they can't hold up against as guardians even this black Earth, black order and minerva team defenders are just going to get wrecked even against guardians defenders are going to get wrecked aim is just better than them all around so let's ask a question down below do you think that this has changed your mind in regards to aim in arena at all is there any kind of matchup you would have liked to have seen or you would like to me to kind of describe as to how it would go down in the comments 
with regards to aim, I've probably played almost every matchup with between Blitz or uh, Arena myself or War, so I can kind of go into it. If not, I can ask Tom to see if he can find it in his Arena. Again, huge shout out for him. He's amazing for being able to do this for us. I really appreciate that. Um, but anyway, um, that's it for today. I'd love to know down in the comments what you guys think. Have a great day and goodbye.